So it's been a little over a month now since version 1.0 of SimDays that I was released on PC and consoles. And although I'm sure I can speak for the vast majority of players when I say it's been fun playing version 1.0, I'm also sure I'm not the only person who is wondering when the next big update will come out and what it will bring to the game. So with that being said, today I'm going to be going over the entire roadmap for the future of SimDays to Die that the fun pimp shared with us before the release of version 1.0. And I'll also be doing a deep dive into all the different information we currently know about all the upcoming features, so enjoy. So this right here is the official roadmap the fun pimps gave us for the future of Seven Days to Die. As you can see, we've got the stable 1.0 release for PC and consoles on July 25th, which brought a bunch of new things to the game, including a new character creation system, an overhaul to armor and clothing, new animals, props, POIs, and more. Then going across, we've got update one, which is going to be called Storms Brewing. This update is supposed to be released in the fourth quarter of 2024, so anytime between September to December. It will supposedly include a new weather system and biome progression overhaul. Additionally, it will bring crossplay between the PC and console versions of the game and give console players access to randomly generated worlds. On top of that, we'll also be getting additional zombie stages, the ability to spawn near friends when you die, twitch drops, and outfit DLCs. Now to take a second to dive into all of that, first of all, I'm very curious to find out exactly how crossplay is going to function with Some Days to Die. What I mean by that is, are we going to have to have something like, say, a Microsoft account to find and play with friends? As you do in games like Minecraft, or are we going to have to have an account with the fun pimps on their own third-party site? The only information we've been given thus far regarding crossplay was the statement in the Alpha Exodus FAQ which said, will the console version have crossplay? While it may not be ready for the 1.0 release, we are pleased to report that crossplay connections already work with PC, PS5, and Xbox Series S and X. However, we are waiting for certification approval with Microsoft and Sony. We intend to have more information in the future and hope for it to be released with Update One's launch. Now, moving on from talking about crossplay, I think the next big thing that is coming in the Storms Brewing update that you probably also heard and it kind of pinged your attention when you heard it was the outfit DLCs. I seriously don't know what to expect with this, but it sounds like the Fun Pimps will be bringing out downloadable content that, let, let's be honest, most likely will not be free and that will be cosmetic focused. How are they going to do this exactly? Well, honestly, I have no idea. Currently, the only outfits you can get in Some Days to Die are the 16 different types of armor, which act visually the same as outfits, but each one has its own unique buff. So I'm presuming that this wardrobe system that's coming in the Storm's Brewing update will have something to do with how these new DLC outfits and outfits in general are going to work, but I personally have got no idea how to feel about DLC content right now. If this DLC and all future DLC for the game is purely only cosmetics, then I honestly don't mind all that much. But I will say that I do hope that if the Fun Pimps end up adding more character customization options for things like hairstyle, hair colors, and even different faces to the game that they won't be locked behind DLC. I've gone ahead and made a poll on my community tab asking how you would feel if some days that I had DLC added to it in the future, so be sure to go vote on that and let me know what your opinion is on this entire subject and comment why you chose which option. Moving on, let's talk about the second big update that will be coming to some days that I called a new threat. This update is supposed to be coming in the second quarter of 2025, so between April and June. It's supposedly going to be bringing bandits to the game, which is a feature that has been talked about by the fun pimps since all the way back in December 2015 with the release of Alpha 13. It'll additionally also bring a new UI slash main menu overhaul, an event system, and a new quest type. So to pick this apart a little bit, let's first talk about the bandits. I am, like many others, extremely excited about the introduction of a new enemy type, especially other humans. From everything that we know about the bandits, they're going to be NPCs that are hostile, have their own unique AI, will potentially drop a loot bag on death, and can also potentially call in reinforcements similar to the screamer zombies. Now the information regarding the ability to call in reinforcements, having their own unique AI, dropping loot bags on death, was found well over two years ago in the XML file for the Alpha 20.2. And in those files as well, we also found out that there'll be three different versions of bandits called the NPC Bandit Melee, NPC Bandit Ranged, and NPC Bandit Leader. Then on top of that, we also got photos shared of the bandits from Keanu Rendon. Keanu is a 3D artist who has worked with the Fun Pimps multiple times and seemingly did once again for the creation of some of the bandits. Now from all of the photos that he shared, I believe this photo of all three bandits side by side is probably the most important, as it basically confirms to us which bandit is which variant from the XML files. You've got the melee type bandit who is on the left, the leader type bandit who must be the guy in the middle is he's holding a shotgun so he can't be the ranged bandit, and then the guy on the right who must be the ranged bandit. Additionally, in the Alpha 21 developer streams from last year, the Fun Pimp showed us actually two other variants of bandits. The first being a female bandit called the Raider Bandit, and then the second being the Overlord Bandit, which I've got to say does look just badass. So yeah, to say that I'm excited to see bandits introduced to the game would probably be the biggest understatement of the year. Now next we've got the UI slash main menu overhaul. We actually got to see some concepts of the new UI from back in the Alpha 21 developer stream that I mentioned a moment ago, and all I can say is it looks really fresh. Obviously, we won't know exactly what the UI UI will look like until it's fully finished, so I don't want to really say too much here because there's not really that much to talk about. After that, we've got the event system. Now, this was actually another thing that was talked about back in 2022 with the release of the Alpha 20 Dev Diary. A user on the Seven Days to Die forums asked, "Can you or someone elaborate on what a random event manager is and/or an example of how it works?" Then a moderator for the forum called Roland responded saying, "The game will randomly put something along your projected path, so you come upon an encounter of some kind. It is being used currently for the Twitch integration, where viewers can spawn things in and create nasty/slash funny/slash beneficial events for." the stream.
streamer who is playing. The idea is that the computer control manager can trigger similar events, probably not the funny silly kinds that they do on Twitch, for the player to encounter. Then Roland shares some possible examples. You are biking along the road and come upon several bandits fighting with a horde of zombies. You can watch, join in to help, slash hinder the bandits, whatever. Then he shared another example. You go to grab the supply drop and the event manager could choose to either place bandits that arrive there just before you did, or bandits that arrive at the same time as you, or bandits that arrive shortly after you do. Then another example which is you arrive at your quest location to find it surrounded by a herd of zombies that must be cleared out before you can begin the quest. Or you are in the middle of a quest and a band of bandits arrive to do the quest as well. He then goes on to say, Wandering hordes somewhat fit this feature but they are more of a timer and this would be randomly spawned and with a greater variety of scenarios, if they are able to fully develop it as they were originally hoping. Then he ends the post by saying, The good thing is it would help the world feel fuller and more populated with zombies and eventually rolling bands of bandits, without actually having to increase the general population. They are simply random focused events that spawn nearby where you are likely to encounter them. So that's possibly what we could see with the event system. And lastly we've got the new quest type which right now we do not have any sort of official confirmation of what it could be. And this also goes the same for the new quest type that is going to be coming in update 3 as well. However from ripping out some of the assets from the game files for thumbnails like this video's thumbnail I did come across an interesting new texture for a flag. It's called flag quest defense and it looks just like this. Now there is flags for fetch, infestation, restore power, clear and buried supply quest which I'll have on the screen now. And all of these are official current quests aside from the defense quest. So possibly one of the two new quests coming in update 2 or 3 could be a defense quest where we possibly have to defend a specific location from zombies or maybe even defend a human NPC. Another small thing before we end this entire section here is a post on the 7 days to die forum from the moderator that we just mentioned a moment ago Roland. This was a post regarding two new quest types from all the way back in 2022 which I think might be worth reading. So it begins on the alpha 21 dev diary where Roland posts saying some development highlights from the last few days from a quick glance at the workflow log. Work on player animations, several new shapes added to the shape menu, updates to Trader Joe compound, work on bandit AI and animations, improvements to various POIs, work on one of the new quest types, lots of bug fixing. Now this naturally led someone to ask for clarification regarding the quest. This person said clear bandit POI is still clear right? Can you confirm that by quest you meant singular? Original and different standalone quests that actually add to the pool of quests? Or are we talking about clear, fetch, restore power, buried or any combination in between? Like how a clear bandits and retrieve satchel would be a basic new quest that is actually not not new, as we are getting the same quest with different entities. Roland then responds clarifying his original statement saying, Other than tantalizing you with the existence of two new quests, I need to wait to add any details or experiences of my own until a developer decides to spill the beans. I will say that they are distinct and not just variations of existing quests, although they do involve mixing it up with zombies, so to that regard they are similar to what we have. Speculate away and I'll poke Prime to see if after the weekend he'll come on and dish a bit or perhaps do a tell all in his next stream. I'll bet he'll like that and then we can update the thread here and talk more about it. Sadly and unfortunately he did not do that and there was no more details given but yeah just keep that in mind. Now let's move on to the last update shown on the roadmap and that is update 3 the long road ahead. This update will supposedly bring a trader overhaul, story mode, steam workshop support and another new quest type. It would be released in the fourth quarter of 2025 so like update 1 between September and December and looks to be a great end to the roadmap thus far as it would bring a long awaited story mode to the game. Now unfortunately unlike most of the things in the previous two updates we don't really know much about this update. For example we have no clue currently what the fun pimps might do to traders to overhaul them or what the steam workshop support might look like. And the only real thing that we do know regarding this story is that it will likely be about us the player doing quests and then meeting Noah who is the person that finds us after we cross the Duke of Navisgain. Noah is the person who gives you the initial 8 tutorial quests to learn the basic mechanics of the game. He says once you complete all the tutorial challenges, good job survivor you have proved to be capable with much potential. We have marked your map with the nearest White River outpost location. There you will find a trader where you can buy and sell goods and trade stories with one of our friendly citizens. Welcome aboard Noah. Now just Judging by the words of his message, Noah comes across as a good guy who will aid us in taking down the final boss of the game which is the Duke. Now when it comes to the Duke we don't know much about him either. What we do know is that the Duke is the owner of Duke Casador's casino and hotel and it's his casino tokens we find around Navis gain and use his currency. He is also the reason we wake up naked at the start of the game as apparently we didn't pay him on time so he took all our gear and left us in the middle of nowhere. There is references from people like Trader Jen who mentioned that casino tokens are used as a protection payment for the Duke making it likely that the Duke runs a protection racket throughout Navis gain and we also know that he has an army of mutated soldiers under his control but that's about it. Now what's really cool is we've actually got some concepts of both Noah and the Duke's base that the fun pimp shared in the Alpha 21 developer stream. As you can see we've got the Duke's casino which looks just awesome and if the small amount of information we do know about him ends up being true it'll be likely that it'll be surrounded by his army of mutated soldiers which will make taking down the Duke's casino a super difficult POI. Then we've got Noah's compound which looks like a fortified bunker built into a mountain and I gotta be honest I really do hope this ends up being his POI as it looks even more insane than the Duke's casino. But yeah everybody that is about everything that we currently know about the 
three upcoming updates. And honestly, although the wait between them will be painful and I'm sure there will be delays with some things as always, I personally am really, really, really excited to see the future of this game. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, with that all being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did go and enjoy it, please be sure to share with your friends, drop a like, and let me know down below in the comment section what new features you are most excited to see come to the game. Also, make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell to stay notified for when I release any other Sim Days to Die news content on my channel. And other than that, guys, thank you all so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.